Avon and Somerset Police Federation seems to be planting seeds to refer back to when police staff get caught out being absolute wrong'uns. Mark Loker, chairman of Avon and Somerset's Police Federation, has said that police could be at risk of corruption and financial control and coercion by criminal gangs because they are paid so poorly. I wonder what those in other roles who get paid far less than the police have to say about that. I mean, I've not exactly seen an increase in shop workers stealing from the till because they're poorly paid, or security officers letting shoplifters walk out with stolen goods in the hope of a kickback from the sale of stolen goods. So why are people worried that police will crack whilst being in the same financial position? Apart from the fact that if a copper turns bent, it means they was always bent, rather than deciding to be corrupt because they find themselves in the exact same financial situation as the rest of us. Mark Loker has said that the government shows contempt and loathing towards officers who he says are breaking because of the way they are treated and the fact they are in abject poverty. I'll tell you what, Mr. Loker, come and live a week in my shoes and see how poverty really feels. I'm yet to go out burgling or shoplifting, so why are police at risk of doing corrupt things when these people are taught, allegedly, to uphold the law and be pillars of society? In a post on Facebook, Loka said policing was facing more cuts amid plans in Westminster to implement austerity measures across the public sector because of the economic crisis. We know we are not going to earn lots. We know we are going to be hammered mentally and physically he said. We know this, but still do it anyway. It's a vocation, and long may it continue to be. Now, a vocation means it's a calling. In other words, these people were basically born to be police officers, but yet there's concerns that they'll be corrupted. I mean, let's face it, many of them already are, whether that's getting details from the police computer for crime gangs or backing their corrupt colleagues when they see them do something wrong. It's all corruption, but if these people were born to be police officers, then they would stand by that, regardless, and never be corrupted. But at what stage does this become economically unviable, he said. So quit, get another job that's more, that pays more. Why turn crooked and risk it all when you can simply leave, get another job, and not find yourself outed for being a bent copper? Police salaries should not leave our officers unable to pay the bills to afford the luxuries in life like food or household energy or petrol. You know, the stuff of dreams. I jest, but this is the reality. This is the true contempt shown to your police service by this government. They have us over a barrel because we cannot say no, or please sir, may I have some more? And by God, does this government take full advantage of that? Then fucking leave. And we are feeling the effects of slow starvation under this regime. We cannot ask for more, nor should we be silly enough to expect more. All this government demonstrates is that it is hell-bent on demanding more from the police. But you seem to forget that the police are supposed to be independent of the government. A public service, but through nothing but your own fault over the years, you have slowly climbed into the government's pocket, acting in the interests of the government rather than in the interests of the public, and in the interests of what is right. Personally, I've got no sympathy for the police these days, as this is all of their own doing. If you simply stuck to the law, refused to become political pawns, doing the jobs for the government uh, here and there, and concentrated solely on your job as peacekeepers, then you wouldn't be in this position. He added, cuts do have consequences, and what this government seems to forget is that our resources are finite. We are breaking, and when I say we, I mean the humans behind the uniform, not the system. Now, if you ask me, this is seed planting for future police crimes. This is a seed that when police get caught out in the future will be used as a mitigating factor. Blame the government, it's all their fault. Well, when it comes to the general members of the public, when then our poverty is the fault of the government, but yours is due to accepting backhanders from politicians and home secretaries and anyone else in power to do their dirty work. And now because of that, you have placed yourself over the barrel and lubed yourself up ready for the long, deep government shafting that you are now getting. There is a way to fix this, of course. There is a way to get the public on side and actually feel sorry for you. A 
and that's to become politically impartial, to simply do what the police was formed to do, protect people against harm, loss or damage to persons or property. The thing that worries me here is that these claims of corruption to come will still be ignored by police senior officers until somebody gets caught. Instead of looking at those most likely to turn and getting rid of them, they will continue to keep them employed until they do something corrupt and then use the government as a reason for why they did it, along with mental health claims, of course. But if he thinks police will turn to corruption, then they already know they have corrupt police who will be easy to turn. Not forgetting, of course, the number of plods who have already turned, of course.